Hey, hey, good morning, Trinity Fellowship. Welcome to church. Welcome to Zion 2022. I am so excited about what God's gonna do in your life, this, this Zion. This is an incredible year. 2022 is gonna be a very important year for us. And I really believe that by participating and being a part of Zion, you are lining up your heart and your will with God's heart and God's will. And that's what's gonna get you in the right position to really be successful and to see a lot of breakthrough this year. And I'm gonna share a prophetic message with us here in just a minute, but I wanna give you a, a few updates. Just wanna welcome everybody that's at all of our campuses, everybody that's joining us online. And I wanna encourage all of us to plan on being a part of all the Zion services. We'll have them at every campus and obviously as well online. It'll be tonight at six o'clock and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 7 p.m. And every year we pray about, should we do a fast? What should we do? What's the right thing for us to do? And this year we're calling a fast, but it's interesting, we're calling it a feast and fast, which some of you ought to be really appreciative of, all right? <laughs> it's a feast and a fast. And here's the deal. What we're gonna do is we're going to feast on the things that are good for us, and we're gonna fast the distractions that are keeping us away from our path. All right, so I wanna encourage you to join. It's gonna be a seven day feast and fast. And so we're gonna feast on the things that are good for us. We're gonna spend time in God's word. I wanna encourage you, if you don't even know how to do that, join the Bible cast every Monday through Thursday. You can join us at 7 a.m. or just catch it as it comes through on the podcast or the feed. It's a great way to practice getting into God's word. If you already have that habit, just spend some extra time in God's word. Feast on the word of God. Enjoy that, engage in that. And we're gonna fast those distractions. I wanna encourage you to shut down social media for the week. We don't need to be just scrolling through social media. Shut down the little games that you play on your iPhone when you're bored. You know, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Connecting dots or whatever it is that you like to do. <laughs> whatever those things are, let's put those things aside. Let's put down just watching TV and just browsing through the news. Put all of that down so that we can tune down the things of the world so we can tune up the things of the spirit. We can turn that up in our lives. And so that's what we wanna do. So I wanna encourage you to feast and fast. And we're gonna do this together as a church. And so if you would go to tfc.org slash Zion, you can go to tfc.org slash Zion, just email, put in your email address there. And then every day we're gonna email you a resource to kind of help you stay in that flow. So we've got some videos that we're gonna send you, some prayer resources, very simple things that you'll get one every day that'll just help you walk through Zion. And I really believe that as you set aside some time in this feast and fast season, and as you participate in Zion, God does a realignment. You know, there's a reprioritization that takes place, and it's very important for us. So I wanna encourage you to do that. I also wanna give you an update you know, we prayed for a significant miracle offering, and I let you know that we were doing NOTA, which is our app that we are working to help disciple the world, and we've made some great strides over even just the last week. Kim and I spent time working with the team, and we were developing the content, and we've got uh, they call it wireframes. We've seen kind of the way the flow the uh, app is going to go. And every time that I have a meeting and we engage in it, I get more and more excited about what God's doing. I'm telling you, we are going to transform millions of lives around the world right here from Trinity Fellowship Church. I am so excited about that. So that process is moving along very well. And so I told you that what we would take in above our normal miracle offering would go towards that project. And I just wanna tell you, we had an amazing miracle offering because of your generosity. We took in $2.8 million in the miracle offering. So just praise God for that. That's amazing. That was 832,000 more than we expected. So that's over $800,000 uh, that is going towards that project. It's almost, uh, it's 693, basically $700,000 over the miracle offering of 21. So just, I wanna say thank you. Just thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your faith in God. And thank you for investing to transform lives all over the world. We're gonna see amazing things happen on that. So the launch date for version one is April. Please be in prayer uh, about that process. All right, here we go. I wanna share with you what I do every year when we start Zion, a, what I call a prophetic message. Now, some of you may not have heard that language before, so I just kinda wanted to let you know what that is. A prophetic message is a little bit different than a normal teaching. So, when I'm normally bringing a message, I'm bringing some truth out of God's word that we can apply to our lives to kinda help us live the life that God wants us to live. That would be what I would consider a normal preach message. But when I'm bringing a prophetic message, it's really what I believe that I've heard the Lord say by the Holy Spirit, and it is a way to help us prepare with what God is doing in this time in this season. And because we know this, God is outside of time, right? 
God exists before time. He's gonna exist after time. He knows the future. He knows the past, obviously. He knows all of the in-between. And so one of the things about God is he is outside of time, but he knows that we live in time. And because he knows we live in time, he gives us prophetic revelation to help us be in sync with what he is doing in this time and in this season. And so when I bring a prophetic message, it's in that light. It's in that context of I want us to be able to ride God's wave so we can be where God wants us to be at the time that he needs us to be there. And this in particular, I believe, is a very important year. The title of, of this message is we're gonna walk through to breakthrough. We have to walk through to get to the breakthrough. And I really believe, how many of you are praying for a breakthrough right now? You've got a breakthrough that you need in your life. Come on, raise your hand online. You can just raise your hand there online. You're gonna walk through to breakthrough. There's a breakthrough that we need. There are, I've got a list of almost a dozen people that I'm praying for right now to get free from COVID right now. They need a breakthrough. And our job is to help walk through so they can get their breakthrough. So when we think about walking through to breakthrough, there's one word. If I could have you, you have one word to kind of keep in your mind as we move through, it's the word motion. We have to move. This is a year of motion. The one thing you can do wrong this year is stay where you are. It's a huge mistake to stay where you are. This is a year of motion. This is a year of moving to walk through our breakthroughs. So I wanna just, quick review. In 2020, the Lord gave me a word and he said it's gonna be a tumultuous decade. And uh, we, I brought that word at Zion and uh, the, the word there was set your course to build on a firm foundation and set your course. And as you do so, we're gonna see, we're gonna see when the world shakes that we get to remain. And that's certainly what we saw, obviously, in 2020. It was an incredibly tumultuous year, but I believe we're in a tumultuous decade. And, and I, I say this to you not to be discouraging. 2022 is gonna be a year of shaking as well. But when we build on the firm foundation, when there's shaking that comes, it's all the other stuff that falls away, but we get to stand on the goodness and the grace of God because we've built our house on the firm foundation. Amen? So you don't have to worry about the shaking. When you're built on the firm foundation, we don't have to worry when the world continues to shake. And then last year, we talked about choosing to step up and possess. We talked about the rise of the ecclesia. That's the word that Jesus used for church, his legislative assembly. And we talked about it being a warring decade. It's a battle season. And we talked about the Ecclesia. We launched the Ecclesia Action Group, which I really wanna encourage. If you're not a part of that, you can still go to tfc.org slash action. You can sign up with that. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for us to do battle this year as the Ecclesia. This last year, even just this last season, we've seen hundreds of people who were facing losing their jobs because of the various mandates that have come down who got resources from the Ecclesia Action Group. Literally, as a church, we have helped hundreds of people all around our communities to defend their religious freedom, and God needs praise for that. Come on. That's what we've done as a church. And what we're doing is we're fighting to prepare a way for the greatest harvest of souls that we've ever seen in human history. So bear that in mind. As we're moving through, and as the world continues to shake, but we're moving through, we're preparing for the great harvest. We're preparing us, the bride, the church, to receive the great harvest that God is doing. And so I believe God has his church, which is all of us, on an accelerated path of motion to get us to where we need to be so that we can be where we need to be when the harvest happens. And so I wanna, I wanna talk through this and, and I wanna talk through how we do this because 2022 is a pivotal year where we either are repositioned for advancement, victory, and promotion or we get left behind. So either we're where we need to be and we have advancement, promotion, all the good things, or we get left behind. I don't know about you, I don't wanna be left behind. Anybody wanna be left behind? No, we wanna be where God wants us to be. So I want us to go to Joshua, and we're gonna look through Joshua chapter one and a little bit from Joshua chapter five, and, and because there's a parallel. And again, we're looking at this prophetically now, okay? One of the things that's great about what God gave us in the Old Testament is he gave us the stories in the Old Testament to let us see patterns and things so that we can enjoin with those and see those patterns today. So this is Joshua chapter one in verse one. It says, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, 
you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the, Laban, uh, the Laban mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River to the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the lands of the Hittites. Now look at verse 5 very carefully. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. Now who wants that promise in your life? No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. Why? For I will be with you. As I was with Moses, I will not fail you or abandon you. Now, when you see this, this is a critical time in Israel's history. Now, we know that God is creating a great nation of Israel, just like God is preparing us to be a tremendous church in this age. And so as God was preparing Israel and what he was doing with them is he was taking them through. They had come, remember they had gotten out of slavery in Egypt 40 years before they had come, had an opportunity to go in the promised land, but the people rebelled against God because it was just too much work. They were afraid they couldn't get across and so they were gonna get defeated and they didn't trust God. So they had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and all of the men of fighting age died off in that time. Moses himself did not get to cross over. He went on to be with the Lord. And so the leadership transferred to Joshua right as they're about to cross over the Jordan River and begin their pilgrimage, begin the battle to take their promised land. Now, what we know is, and you can even see from this scripture, is there was a promised land that God had given Israel, but it was currently filled with the enemies of God. It's the same thing for us. We have a promised land. You have a blessing. You have a promised land. You have a promotion, but right now there's a devil squatting on your land. And what we have to do is we have to recognize as the ecclesia, as the legislative body, as the church, that God has given us the authority to go get the enemy off of our land so that we can inherit the promises that God has for us. And to do that, we have to recognize that there's a shift. Now, globally, the church is facing a season of transition. I'm not talking about a transition of people like Joshua was facing, but we're facing a transition of methodologies and mindsets. God is realigning the church, resetting her purpose, and making her ready for the great harvest to come. The story of Joshua and the Israelites is instructive because it gives us handles to prepare for the shifts we need to make in both our mindsets and our actions. All right, now I want you to think of those two things. He's shifting our mindsets, which is then going to affect the actions that we take. All right, now listen, I want to look at Joshua 1.3 here one more time. And then I want, to, I want to draw some, some truth out of it. This is Joshua 1.3. He says, I promised you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land that I have given you. Right? You see that? Wherever you set your foot. So here's my first point. Your foot has supernatural power. In fact, it says the sole of your foot. The sole of your foot has supernatural power. In other words, where you go and where you stand matters. Because where you go and where you stand is the ground that you get to take. Now, if you think about this from Joshua's perspective, God's telling him, wherever you set your foot is land that I have given you. Now, what was on the land where Joshua was going to have to set his foot? The enemy. In other words, what God is telling Joshua here is a very important truth. Because what he's saying is, is your advancement comes with your obedience. You're going to walk through to your breakthrough. Now, what do we often want? What we want as Christians, what I want, I'm not, I'm not being critical of all of us. What I would much rather do is pray, have the enemy vacate the land so that I can move into it, right? Have you ever moved into a house that somebody else hasn't moved, hadn't moved out yet? Right? Say you bought a house, right? I know some people this actually happened to them, right? I'm not going to call out their names, but they're laughing louder than anybody else right now. So they're giving themselves away. So, you know, there's that timing thing where you're supposed to, you know, you bought the house, you're supposed to move in, but they still got all their stuff there. And so you've kind of got this, well, what's going to happen? What's well, my house? Get your stuff out. It's my house now. When we think about this from a spiritual perspective, this is exactly what God is calling us to do. That means that the promise God has for you, for your family, for your children, for your purpose on the earth, for your job, for the breakthrough that you're looking for, it may have a devil sitting on it right now. But there's a way that you can move that devil, and the way that you do is with the sole of your foot. You walk over and you say, no, this is my land. This is my house. God has given this to me, and I'm standing right here. 
And what happens is, is there's something that shifts in the spirit because the enemy doesn't want us to do that. This is a very important principle. Where your foot treads is where God delivers the victory. We walk into our promised land to claim our inheritance. God wants you right in the middle of the action. And that's what we gotta see this year. This is a year where the church is gonna move from being something that's on the sidelines to being something that's right out in the middle of the battle, standing where the enemy is. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand because I don't wanna, I don't wanna embarrass anybody, so don't feel any pressure. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. But I know of people this last, just the last few months who have had to make a decision between what they believe God's telling them to do with their body and what their employer is telling them to do, and they had to make a decision because there was a season when the employer was telling them, you're gonna lose your job if you don't get this vaccine or you don't get this shot. And there was a lot of pressure. Again, don't raise your hand, but there was a lot of pressure. I was hearing this pressure. We were feeling the pressure that was being put on people. And they were trying to say, I don't believe God is telling me to do this, but what if I lose my job? What happens? What do you have to do? You have to go and you have to stand and put your foot on that ground and say, you know what, devil? I'm not moving. I am going to stand here because I am more obedient to God than I am to anything else. And I'm going to stand on my faith. I'm going to stand in this place. And it's not that we're trying to be mean or rude. That's our ground. That's our turf. We're not going to let the enemy knock us off of it. But you realize you can't fight by retreating. You can't fight by giving in. In this time, in this season, you fight by walking your foot right up there. You stand on that ground and say, I'm not moving because God said this is where I'm supposed to be. And we stand in that place, and that's how we do the fight. That's why we walk through to our breakthrough. When you see the area that you need advancement in, you have to walk into that area. If you're dealing with issues in your marriage right now, it's time to stand on the promises of God on your marriage. You don't retreat, you don't back up, you walk in. And you keep walking in the direction of your marriage until you get your breakthrough. Where our foot treads is where God is calling us to do. To, to be and to, to do the battle. We are entering a season, I want you to hear this. If I, if I heard God say anything in this message as he was giving it to me, this is one of the most insignificant things that God said. We're entering a season where there is a higher cost for being a Christian than we've ever seen in our lifetime. Now let that sink in for just a minute. We're entering a season where there will be a higher cost for being a Christian than there ever has been in our lifetime. Now, if we compare the cost we pay for the cost people are paying all over the world, it's nothing, right? It's nothing. So I'm not, I'm not comparing to what the Christians in Afghanistan that I'm aware of are dealing with right now. They're, they're literally losing their lives for their faith. That, that's not where we are, let's be real, right? So let's not get feeling sorry for ourselves. But let's also recognize this, there is gonna be a cost this year. And that's gonna increase as the, as the years go on. There's going, there is an anti-Christian spirit that is moving not just across the, the world, but certainly across our nation and it's going to cause a cost for those of us who are gonna stand for what we believe in. We've seen a foretaste of that here in just the last few months. If you, if you back up into 2020, there, there are shutdowns of churches on an unprecedented level where the government's coming in and saying, no, 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 you can't do that. And even in West Texas, just a few months ago, probably, I think it's October, might have been September, I don't remember, but just in the last few months, a health official of West Texas, this is not happening across the world, a health official in West Texas said, the worst thing that I can imagine is 400 people getting together in a room and singing together. Now, what was he talking about? He wasn't talking about a, a concert somewhere, he was talking about people going to church. Well, I've got something to say. I think the worst thing that could happen for our region, the worst thing that can happen for this world is if the church quits worshiping. The most important thing we have to do is stand up. Now, it doesn't mean that we're, but well, let me just say it this way. There's going to be a cost for that, right? There, there, is a, there is pressure that is coming that we've never seen before. So we've got to be aware of that. God is calling up his ecclesia, his church, to be ready. This is a year where we're called to advance forward, occupying land currently held by the enemy. It's going to be both a personal and a corporate battle as we stand for righteousness. We've got to go set our foot, foot on that ground. So our mission comes with this promise. And this is important to see, Joshua 1.5. No one will be able to stand against you as long as I live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Now, I want us to look at this. God says, I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. What God is not saying here is that I'm gonna go in front of you. 
Now, God goes before us, we know. God prepares the way, we know. I'm, so I'm not saying God's not in the future. But what I'm saying is, is in this season, you notice there's a shift that is taking place here. There's a shift that was taking place for the Israelites. God is saying, look, I'm going to be with you. So if you want, God's saying it this way. Let me, let me paraphrase, right? With the sake of, I'm gonna go, this is Jimmy paraphrase, right? Don't write this down, right? This is not to be published. All right, here we go. Jimmy paraphrase. Wherever you go, I go. Wherever you want me to fight, you gotta carry me there. Wherever you wanna see transformation, you're the one that has to show up because I'm going with you. In other words, if you wanna see something transformed, we carry the fight to the enemy. Why? Because we carry the God of the universe inside of us. Right? right? Who's filled with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Right? Who's got Jesus living inside of you? Who's got God living inside of you? We have the creator of the universe living inside of us. Why do you think he wants us to walk into the battle? Because when we walk into the battle, he shows up with us. He will never leave us or uh, forsake us. He will never fail us or abandon us, is what that translation says. So we recognize that when there's a battle to fight, as we walk into that battle and we stand, we're not just standing on our own, we're bringing the host of heaven with us. But he needs us to go there so the battle can be enjoined, right? He needs us to engage. So we have to recognize it's our job to carry God into these challenges. And here's what's fun. Have you ever, you know, and, and this is not a great story, so I'm gonna change the names to protect myself or the innocent or somebody else. <laughs> but, you know, when I was in high school, I had some big friends, right? Because I played football and I, I was, all my friends were linemen, you know, defensive linemen, linemen, you know. And so it was always fun. As long as I went anywhere with my friends, life was cool, right? Because I had the biggest guys around, you know, that were, that were a part of, my, a part of my crew. And so it was always fun. You can walk in anywhere and, and be a tough guy. But being the smallest of the bunch, I never acted that way by myself. <laughs> because it didn't work out very well for myself. But when I had my crew, it, we, could, we could conquer anything, right? At least we felt like we could. It's the same thing with God. Right? And when we recognize who we're with, what happens is, and we're going to talk about fear and discouragement here in a second. When we recognize who we're with, everything else falls away. All right, here we go. Let's keep going. This is, let's keep going in Joshua. We're going to start in verse 6 now. This is God. He's still speaking to Joshua. He just told him, you're going to go out to take the land with your foot. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. He's stepping it up now. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction, talking about the Old Testament, continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Now I want to tell you, this, this last summer, oh, well, let me finish the verse. For God will be with you wherever you go. Do not be afraid or discouraged. This last summer, uh, I think it was probably July, Kim and I were sitting around one day and we were very discouraged. There was a lot of things that were happening. There was a lot of frustrations on many different fronts, many different battle fronts, and, and we were just very discouraged. And so it was one Friday morning. Fridays are our Sabbath, it's our day off. And so we had uh, gotten up and done like we usually do on, the, on our Fridays. We just kind of take it easy in the morning and have our coffee in the morning. And we're sitting there in the living room talking and we're just you know, talking about how frustrated we are and, and fr frankly, how discouraged we are because we're not seeing breakthrough. And, uh, and Kim had just been reading this verse in her, her quiet time. She's going through the Bible in a year and this was coming up in that area. And so she was just reading it and so we were reading it together. And I saw something in this passage that I had never seen before. And that is, I knew that God told Joshua three times to be strong and courageous. And you know, anytime God is saying something three times, he's not being redundant for his sake, Right? He's saying it because he knows we need to remember this. Now, I don't know if any of you have, you know, like teenage boys. I remember when I was a teenage boy, I remember raising teenage boys. Have you ever given them a list of things to do, right? I want you to bake your bed, clean your room, do your homework, right? And then you come back 10 minutes later and they're playing video games. And you're like, what, what happened? He goes, well, I did my homework yesterday. You're like, well, now there was a list. You were supposed to make your bed, you know. Well, I think all men are like that. I think maybe, you know, I don't know if it's just teenage boys. Kim will give me the list of what to get at the grocery store. And then she said, you need to write this down. No, steel trap. You know, yeah, you know how that works. <laughs> when God says something three times, it's because he really wants them to get it. 
You've got to know this. If you're gonna be successful with where you put your foot, you've gotta be strong and courageous. And then he gives this last instruction. This is what Kim and I saw that morning in, in July. He says, do not be afraid or discouraged. Now get this, this is my second point. This is really, really critical. For us, fear and discouragement are illegal. Fear and discouragement are illegal for us. It's a command. God commands, do not be afraid or discouraged. Fear and discouragement are illegal. God is encouraging us to be strong and courageous. Now, we've got to understand these words. Strength in this context means fortitude, the capacity to withstand great force or pressure. So when God is telling us to be strong, he's telling us, you're going to have to face extreme force and pressure. And when you stand in that, that's where that strength comes in to push against the extreme force and pressure. Everybody that felt the mandates the last few months knows exactly what this feels like. There's extreme force and pressure, and that's what the enemy wants to do. He's bringing that force and pressure. Courage means the ability to do something we know is going to be difficult or dangerous. So God is telling us to stand firm among a lot of pressure and to intentionally put ourselves into a situation that is gonna be difficult or possibly dangerous. That's what God is saying. And isn't that what battle looks like? Isn't that what war looks like? Isn't that what advancement looks like? When we recognize that we have to be strong and resist pressure and we have to go where we're, we're, we're afraid that there's some level of danger, we, we could be, you know, there's attacking, there's pressure, there's things that we're gonna have to deal with there. We have to be strong and resist that pressure and go where we know there's gonna be conflict. So God is calling us to put our foot in places where we're gonna feel pressure and there's gonna be some level of risk that we're gonna sense. Now, if you see this from the enemy's perspective, it totally makes sense. You know, if you see the enemy's game plan, it opens up everything. And what it is at this, the enemy knows two things for certain. He knows that Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth, and that Jesus has called us to be the ones to go exercise that authority. Right? The, Jesus, uh, the enemy knows Matthew 28. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have given you all authority, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We carry the authority of God everywhere we go. The enemy knows that. The enemy knows you're filled with the Holy Spirit. The enemy knows you have authority. The enemy knows that you have the keys to the kingdom and he doesn't anymore because Jesus took them back and Jesus has all authority and now he's given you authority. The enemy knows this. The enemy knows. So the only thing the enemy has is fear and intimidation. Now think about that. The only thing the enemy can do is bluster and blow. If the enemy can make us afraid or he can make us discouraged, which means lack of courage, if the enemy can make us afraid or discouraged, he can cause us to take our foot off of the land that we were supposed to be standing on and take a step back. So that's why the enemy uses fear and discouragement to come at us. So when you're facing that situation at work where you don't know how this is gonna come through and you're feeling the pressure, the emails are coming and the forms are coming and they're not written the way they probably ought to be written and then you're hearing the scuttle button, people are going, what are you gonna do? I don't know, what are you gonna do? I don't know, what's gonna happen? And you're feeling that pressure, that pressure is not coming. And I'm not speaking bad of people. Remember, our battle's not against flesh and blood. Our battle's against the enemy. And so as we're standing against the enemy, the enemy is using fear in people to stir up fear so that it can cause those of us who have the authority of God to take a step back. And what God is telling Joshua is, don't you dare take a step back. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. Because when you're strong and courageous and you take your stand on the land that God has given you, God says, I'm going to show up. This is what his promise is. God says in verse nine, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You see, when we listen to fear and discouragement, we forget that God is standing with us. Because we all know this. If we had the heavenly picture, right, and you have the devil over here squawking, and you have us standing, and you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit standing right here with us, who's going to win that showdown, right? Well, the enemy realizes that the only way he can get God off his land is to get us off his land. If we'll stand, the enemy will flee. If you resist 
the enemy, he will flee from you, is what it says in James. So how do we respond? Fear and discouragement are legal. When we cooperate with them, we're believing, because we're saying we don't believe that God's with us. We've forgotten that God is with us. We've forgotten that we are his agent and he has called us to go take this land. So how do we respond when we're facing our fear or feeling discouraged? It's really simple. We remember who's with us. We just have to remember who's with us. We just have to remember, what are you gonna do to me? God's on my side. I'm on God's side. I'm standing with him. What are you going to do to me? And we stand in that place. If we get our eyes off the challenge and onto the king and off the problem and onto the creator of the universe, then our faith goes up, our strength goes up, and we get to see the breakthrough. And here's what's so fun, and this is really why God does this. I really do believe the reason God does it this way is because he wants you to be an eyewitness to his power. He wants you to be on the front line when the breakthrough comes through. He wants you to see it with your own eyes, to hear it with your own ears, and he wants the people around you to see that's a person of faith that stood for what they believed. And what it'll do is it'll provide an opportunity for your advancement and your promotion in the kingdom when you stand in that place. This is gonna be a year where we're gonna have opportunities to take ground like we've never done before, but we're gonna have to move through to our breakthrough. We're gonna have to let our foot tread in some areas where we're gonna have to be strong and courageous. And when we do, we're gonna get to see God come through. I, I wanna close with this. I wanna fast forward just a couple of chapters over to Joshua chapter five. And I want you to see this. Now, that just to put you in the history there of, of Joshua, they've crossed over the Jordan River they're now kind of sandwiched between the mountains there, the Dead Sea, and the Jordan River. So they're actually, if you look at the geography of Israel, they're kind of trapped in this little triangle in the bottom. And in Jericho, the most fortified city, is right here just above them, and all the Israelites are camped there. And this is, uh, now they're getting ready to go to battle, and they're trying to figure out what their battle plans are gonna be. At that time, the verse two, the Lord tells Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise the second generation of Israelites. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the entire male population of Israel. Joshua had to circumcise them because all the men who were old enough to fight in the battle when they left Egypt had died in the wilderness. Those who left Egypt had been circumcised, but none of those born after the Exodus during the years of the wilderness had been circumcised. So it goes on to say, and Joshua circumcised all of the males. Now, if you think about this from a battle strategy, this was dumb. Because now they're on the same side of the Jordan River as all of their enemies. But it's there that God decides that all of the males need to be circumcised. Now, we don't know why Mo Moses had a thing against circumcision. We're not sure why they didn't get circumcised in the wilderness. But we know this. God's not going to let them go forward until they get circumcised. But he also put them in a very precarious situation. He put them in a situation where they were trapped against the Jordan River flowing at Fred Strange, the Dead Sea, and the mountains of Israel and Jericho right in front of them. And this is the place where God decided it's time for all of the males to be circumcised. It's time for you to catch up with the covenant that we've made with one another. And here's my third point, and this is very important for us. Verse three, this is the time to deal with our sin and shame. This, this is a time to deal with our sin and shame. Moses had his issue with circumcision, so he kind of resisted it. God knew that you're not gonna be able to go forward, Joshua, until we get this in the right shape. For Joshua, this was a terrible battle plan. God knew they needed to deal with this issue that was standing between them relationally. And they would not have done it on the other side of the river. Here's a point. Sometimes the difficulty we feel is not just our circumstances, it's God getting us to a place of surrender in our lives. Sometimes the challenges that God's letting us face are not just because we're taking ground. Sometimes it's because God's doing something in our heart. A lot of times he's doing both things at the same time. So it's important as we're beginning this year that we deal with any sin or shame that we have in our lives. Now we know this, Jesus died for our sins, past, present, and future. God's grace is abundant towards us, but that's no excuse for us to take advantage of him. The sin in our life hurts our intimacy with God. It's an issue of relationship, not salvation. When we have areas of sin, whether it's habits we struggle with or the hidden areas in our heart we keep God out of, the enemy has grounds to accuse us. It is particularly impossible to be strong and courageous when we are living compromised lives. Because what the enemy will do is come at that area of weakness. So when you have an opportunity to stand strong and to stand in that place, and you have sin in your life, the enemy comes and accuses you in that area. It's, it's almost like a, it, it's a, it's a handhold. 
It's almost like a, a belt loop that we're giving the enemy, and he can grab a hold of that thing because we haven't dealt of that with God. This is the, the way that the author of Hebrews says it. It says, therefore, we, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowds of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Sin is a hindrance that restricts us from walking through. You can't walk through to your breakthrough while you're entangled with sin. Now, when we're dealing with sin and we're dealing with sin in our lives, it's the easiest thing. Here's the deal. Jesus died for all of our sin, past, present, and future. We have grace that covers everything. But there's a relational thing that happens with God when we have a habit, a practice in our life, and we need to get that breakthrough. So we just have to come before God and just say, God, I'm sorry. Jesus, thank you for your blood that washes away my sin and my shame. And God, I give my sin to you. See, the real thing is when we give our sin to God and we quit holding on to it and we give it to God, we're appropriating the grace that we've already been given. And we say, God, I'm sorry. I need you to change my mind. I need you to change my heart. I want our relationship to be restored because here's the thing. I've got battles to fight. I want to stand and be strong and courageous and I'm sick and tired of the enemy holding this over my head. So God, I bring it to you in humility. I bring it to you in, with trusting in your grace and in your goodness. And I surrender my sin to you. I want to pray for us here in just a minute because I, I want us to get in the right place where God wants us to be. 2022 is going to bring some significant challenges. The economy is going to be shaken. The political atmosphere is going to get more difficult. The world will become more unstable and the enemy's voice will become louder as he works to blanket the earth with his messages of fear and discouragement. But God has a plan. It's a plan to advance his people. The one who has all the authority in heaven and on earth has marked each of us for an assignment. We have land to take. We have places to carry his glory. We have battles to fight. And as we go to take our stand and face the fear and discouragement with strength and courage, we are going to see breakthrough. We are going to see advancement. We're going to see promotion. And we're going to set the stage for a great awakening that our culture has never seen as thousands and millions turn their hearts to God and he's asking us to go and be on the front line. Yeah. He wants us to stand on the front line, but it begins when we get right with our own heart. We choose to be strong and courageous and we say, God, wherever my foot treads is where you're gonna be. Send me where you want me to stand. Let me pray for us. Father, we're just so thankful for you. And God, we're thankful that you have called us as your people to go and take a stand. So Father, I pray for every individual right now. Holy Spirit, come and minister to us. Let your hand flood over us. Let your power fill us. God, we wanna be a strong and courageous people that are taking ground for you. And God, we say to the enemy, when you come to push us off the land that God has given us, we will be immovable. We will take a step forward. We will continue to advance because we're gonna keep walking through to get our breakthrough for ourselves and for the kingdom of God. So Father, I pray for every individual that is feeling that pressure right now, whether it's relationally or in their job, whatever it is. And God, I pray that you would give us strength encourage. Thank you that you have assured us you will be with us everywhere that we go. You will never leave us. You will never abandon us. God, show us how to keep our eyes locked on you everywhere that we go. And this morning, Father, we want to do business with you with any area of sin. I thank you that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So we're not talking about condemnation. We're just talking about dealing with the sin. So whatever it is, Holy Spirit, just bring it up. Could be a habit that you've got. Could be the way you're using your mouth. Could be the way you've treated your spouse or your kids or whatever it is. Just let Holy Spirit bring it up. You know, when we cooperate with God in the house cleaning, it makes it so much easier. And we've got the grace of God that's there. And you just say, God, I'm sorry for this. I repent of this. I changed my mind on this. I turn this over to you. I surrender this to you. I lay it down at the foot of the cross. I want to go in a different direction. And so Holy Spirit, just thank you. We lay down our sin. We lay down the shame. 
Thank you we receive your forgiveness and your grace as you wash us clean and fresh anew. And thank you that you give us the boldness to stand and say, okay, enemy, whatever you're accusing me of, Jesus paid for on the cross. Now I'm gonna stand and take this place. Now just keep doing business with Holy Spirit for just a minute because I wanna pray for one other group and that is you have not yet made Jesus the Lord of your life. You know that this thing that has been coming through, you've been facing the headwinds of the enemy and you know you're not taking ground, the enemy is knocking you around. But you're ready to surrender. You're ready to make Jesus the Lord of your life. You're ready to give him your soul. You give him your life. Let him wash away your sins and empower you. And if that's you, it's the easiest thing. It says when we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. That means we say, God, I'm not going to live my life anymore I want Je on my own. I want Jesus to be in charge. I surrender to him. I accept that his blood washes away my sin. And that we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. That means we believe he is who God said he was. In that place, in that moment, all of your sin is washed away. And if that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Whether you're at home online or you're in one of our campuses. If you're saying, I want to receive Jesus this morning, I want you to raise your hand. Just as an acknowledgement of I'm receiving Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and grace. We thank you for those who have raised their hands. You can look up here. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Wherever you are, would you text the word decision to 88787? 88787. We've got people who did the exact same thing you did on the other end, and they want to help you walk through that. All right, we're going to take communion together now. If you've got your cups there. Thank you, baby. You can open those up. Yeah, go ahead and open up that layer and see the bread, then take that into your hand and lift up that bread. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you are God with us. We thank you that your promise is to us that you will never leave us. You will never abandon us. You are always with us. Lord, I pray that that truth and that reality would strengthen our souls, would strengthen our bodies. And Lord, we say thank you. We thank you for this communion meal that we get to remember how much you love us, that you held nothing back. We thank you that your body was broken so that our bodies could be healed. We thank you and we receive that reality and we honor you in Jesus' name. Now take the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and peel back the next layer, revealing the cup. And hold it up, remembering the blood of Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for this eternal covenant that you chose to make with us. It's a love covenant. You poured out your blood on our behalf. And Lord, we thank you that your blood speaks a better word. It speaks forgiveness. And so, Lord, we release that reality over our lives. And we thank you, Father, for being so faithful to send Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for sending Holy Spirit to empower us. We thank you for this eternal covenant. We want to make the statement that we are in covenant with you as you are in covenant with us. We consecrate ourselves before you. Let us do all that you are calling us to. We choose to do so with great humility and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now take the cup. Amen. If you'll hold on to those, you can throw those away on your way out this morning. I want to encourage you that here in just a minute, as we pray to dismiss you, our prayer teams are going to be down front. They're here to pray with you. You know, a verse I didn't get to get to is James 5. And it talks about when we confess our sin one to another and we pray for one another, there's a healing that takes place. So I just want to encourage you. If you just need help with breakthrough, this team is trained. You don't even have to tell them everything that is. Just come down and tell them, I need prayer for breakthrough. Or you might need a healing. You might have a friend that needs healing. You might need prayer for, for decisions in your life. Whatever it is, they're going to be here for you. Also, we have sessions that are happening all over. I encourage you to check the app. Everything from prophetic ministry to the interactive uh, teaching session that will take place in here. Lots of things that are happening in the next 10 minutes. Definitely we want to see you tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going to be down in the worship center. 
It's going to be an incredible night. I really want to encourage you to come be a part of that. So let's just, if you would, stand. Prayer team, come on down, and we're going to pray a blessing over you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless this amazing Trinity Fellowship Church family. We thank you, Father, that you are blessing us with your boldness and with your courage, that we would be absolutely unshakable, immovable, and fearless. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd fill our hearts with so much love, with so much light, with so much life, that everywhere we go, we release your presence and your healing power is made manifest to everyone who is around us. Lord, we give you the praise and we bless this amazing church family in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We love you guys. We love y'all. We'll see you tonight. tonight. Come on down for prayer. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us at Church Online this morning. We loved having you. Don't forget, stick around for our 1015 interactive message right after this where you can ask questions of Pastor Jimmy and we'll get to hear him talk it out with some of our other pastors. It's such a great opportunity to dive deeper into the message that we just heard. We love you guys so much. We'll see you here tonight at six for Zion Worship and Prophetic Night. Love you guys.